So, yeah, thank you for getting on the call with me. I'm very happy that I get to talk to you. Um, it's like I mentioned in the chat room, it just has been such a challenging journey for me, just in general. Um, I know the problem's not the program. The program's excellent. The program's really just my psychology behind it all and just the way I kind of um, go about things, I guess. Sometimes I feel like I'll miss something and then I'll get so much FOMO, then I'll jump into something else and then the market will go against me the entirety of the day. I've watched your content in and out. It is just amazing. And that is not the issue. Um, I just feel like I want to work on some of these things and, you know, get these gains back slowly over time. I think that's another thing. I'm trying to rush, trying to get everything back, and it's just right. making things worse, to be honest. <laughs> well, it makes sense, right? You So in the chat, you mentioned you lost, what was it, $75,000 or so? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense that you do want to, of course, get it back. It's your money, right? You do deserve to get it back to a certain degree. But... On one piece you mentioned, you mentioned that your main issue is kind of the FOMO aspect and probably some other things, which we'll dive into in a little bit. But why do you specifically have FOMO, basically? I think I'll just see, like, uh, prices take off and I'll, like, kind of try to, like, calculate in my head. I'm like, wow, that would have been three, four, five, six, seven thousand if I would have just got in. Um, and then after a while um, of just waiting, I'll get impatient. I'll get impatient. But, and then I'll wait, just... go, go back to the first part. So is hmm. that. Bef is that before or after you already entered a trade that didn't work? Uh, before. So if I'm like, if I'll just be waiting for an opportunity, like I'll set my alerts, I'll set my zones, and I'll just be waiting. And if I don't see something happen um, in like three, four hours, but I'll just see prices moving so volatile, and I'll just want to get into something, and then I'll just jump into anything, and I'll pay dearly every time. And every time, I know I should have done that, and I should have just right. been patient. Even if nothing would have happened the whole day, that's fine, because... I know for sure with the strategy, it's not even more about quantity. It's really just about quality, just waiting for that right opportunity to um, to optimize. So right. I just really want to work on that. I do. And I just, it's been such a battle. Well, I mean, honestly, it's, so it sounds like the fix for you or one of the fixes potentially is that, because the issue obviously is that the FOMO is causing you to enter multiple trades that you shouldn't enter. That's the obvious. Right. But the fix for it clearly is, from the sound of it, you're not doing anything in the meantime of waiting. Right. Like so, for me, I, like as crazy as it sounds, but with the house I built, I have multiple different rooms that have different stuff in it. Not saying you have to do that, of course, mm -hmm. but it's just the reason I did it like that. It was so that if I'm potentially set up zones for a day trade, I'm not even in front of my computer watching TV or doing this or that. I go to a completely different room with my phone with the alert potentially where I would, you know, maybe hear it, or I could just turn the computer up with an alert. But anyway, I'll go into a different room and do something else. I'll go work out. I'll go watch TV in a completely different room, not that loud, so I can still hear my phone or the computer go off, right? I'll go, I don't know, make something to eat. I'll go do something. I'll go get in the sauna, the hot tub, et cetera, whatever, something like that, right? Mm -hmm. But because if I don't, I'll have the same issue as you, and I think a lot of people do, realistically, mm -hmm. because if I'm, because I w ended up doing this whole thing that people said was so cool to do as traders are like oh have your computer on the left for trading and on the right you can watch tv at the same time that's the worst stupid thing ever because you're just gonna be looking at the chart like it's the movie yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> and then before you know it you did eight trades and you're like huh i won one <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, this is the worst movie ever so you need to leave yeah. that chair if this if this is a spot where you do your trading you need to leave that room whenever you know something's going on okay Okay. And that's another thing too. So I've noticed does when that, I do that, make, does that make sense though? Absolutely. It does. It for okay, just to recap, I understand clearly I need to just get away from the computer. Uh don't sit there and stare at it like it's my favorite movie. Just I need to do something else. Um and I've been trying to learn other skills too, just so I don't do that. But I just I think right now it's more of a mindset thing for me. I'm just so I feel so involved in this and I just want it to happen fast and it's not gonna happen fast. And I know that. I know I gotta be better. Yeah. Um, we just need just, to restrict restrict you, man. I mean, the the time in front of the computer okay. um, needs to be lower. And then, I'm assuming you're trading more than one contract. If you are, you probably at the moment need to go back to trading only one single little contract for that hundred dollars okay. or so. Um, hmm. Because right now you don't deserve to trade more than that. Because of course, with the losses you've currently had, so th this kind of restrictive, okay. almost like restrictive diet, basically needs to happen. Uh, okay. We're at, we're at critical times, obviously, right? Not to give like a full diagnosis, basically, but I mean, it is what it is. So one mm -hmm. contract for sure. 
and prove to yourself this is the goal right to, to prove to yourself for one week you can just win 70 percent of your trades off of just one contract if you can okay. great if not then technically great as well you only lost like 15 dollars <laughs> right, right. <laughs> depending on how long you hold trades etc cetera, etc cetera. um but yeah that that needs to be definitely definitely the goal if you do those two things alone you definitely turn the ship around from a consistency perspective depending on how your other how your trades go as a whole anyway okay understood and thank you for that and that's uh another issue i've been having too is i'll hold on to trades too long like i know i'll have a mental stop i'll even set it on my actual um chart i know where i should get out at but i'll i'll just i'll see it get hit i don't want to give up and then it'll just take off and i know i should have got out that's another thing that's really has cost the um, losses the compound because when i do win it is a blessing and i should consider it as so um, whether it be six, seven, eight hundred dollars, that's way more than I was making when I was working at my job. Right. So I should really appreciate that. But sometimes, um, once I lose, I'll see that loss come so quick and, um, I just, I'll just hold and that's, and that's an issue. And then sometimes it, it'll just take off way past right. my mental stuff anyway. It's so hard to catch, but that happens rarely. But the main <clears> thing <throat> really is me just holding too long. To lose yeah, the, the second one happens, but it's very rare, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. And that usually has other signs that you can find before, to be honest, if we wanted to get into it. But on the first okay. one, for sure, it sounds like you have an issue with understanding what an actual win is, right? Yeah. So, because in your mind, and a lot of people's minds, honestly, a lot of people see a win as they made money, essentially, which is not the game for this. Like, whether it's investing, day trading, or a business as a whole, you're not going to make money every single day. This is, this is not how right. things work at all, period. It's um, You got to kind of flip the, the lens here, I guess, of since you've watched my content, I suppose. Me, mm-hmm. I think as of recently, I mentioned something about focusing on capital preservation as the goal, yeah. but not even to get even to the little fancy technical word. Your goal really is, A, yes, that, but realistically, it's, it's – maintaining and or gaining 70% win ratio. Like you should only, because of that way, if you do 10 trades, right? Mm. And if you lost three, then you should still be like, yes, I, I still won seven type of thing, right? Mm. But you're like, but also you still should, and the reverse still in your head say verbally, yes, I lost three. Because yeah. that means that you lost trades because it's a given because you're not going to lose, you're not going to win everything. But B, you should also celebrate that you, you know, sold at the specific stop loss because that's part of the strategy. Like I'd argue right now, I mean, you you already know this is not even an argue, but you're not following the strategy at all. You say you get it, but it doesn't seem like you get it because you don't sell where you're supposed to sell, right? Right. Personally, I I try to find every possible reason for me to either on well, the market close. I try to find every possible reason to um, either not enter a trade. Or when I'm in a trade to get out of like a break even if something's not even going in my favor. Like I'm thinking mm-hmm. the opposite of you. I'm I'm thinking, how do I get out ASAP? Because I don't want to be in a trade. I want to be a trade in a trade as, as short as possible uh, to either get break even or some kind of win and then be done. Like I'm as soon as I enter, I'm literally looking. Okay, where am I exiting? Where am I exiting? Where am I exiting? Oh, it's not going in my favor. I'm exiting for a break even. I don't care. Okay. You have no idea how many break evens I actually do. They even continuously go on without me, but. The catch is that once I even do that for the break even, I have to close the computer and walk the fuck away. Okay. Because if I actually genuinely don't, I'm staring at it, then it goes in my favor. And I jump in, even myself, because I'm a human being that's normal, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so what you're doing is not abnormal. It's just you're in front of the computer too much. Okay. Um, and then you know the trade went into being a losing trade. You're like, God damn it! I knew it was gonna, I knew it was gonna work, but I got in late because my stop loss is larger, and then the large, the loss is larger for just that stupid reason alone. So, um, yeah, a lot of this stems back to you just watching the chart too much, watching the chart too much, and you find you find every reason to say yes versus I find every reason to say no. Hmm. Absolutely. Thank you for that, because it, it definitely sounds like that's what I need to do. Just do other things. Um, get away from the computer. Trust the process and stop chasing the money. And really just scale down and prove to myself that, you know, I can do this and I have to go. I have to take some steps backwards so I can go forwards again. It just really seems like I need to do that Um, because I have everything I need. I have, you know, your excellent community. I have the platform 
tons of content on YouTube. I've watched every video, and I just always feel so encouraged when I watch it because it's just so good. Um, but the issue is me, so I definitely need to um, just go backwards and figure all this out for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And keep it as simple as possible, man. I mean, you see how my stuff is. I like I make it. That I means it's just one of my gifts. I make things look very simplistic, but yeah, realistically, yeah. it's it's just kind of it's what it is. Especially with trading, honest, honestly, mm -hmm. I just I just purposely look for the simple parts. If I don't see something simple, I don't even want to touch it. Like there's a lot okay. of days I don't even trade. Period. If I don't even see a simple day, like you mentioned earlier, you saw like some day where hypothetically stuff's going for four hours, and you you personally saw nothing. Mm -hmm. That's a good day to me. I mean, I'm probably out playing basketball or something. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not trying to trade. <laughs> Tell right. You um, Absolutely. Yeah. Or and I, and I can do that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Say? Go ahead. Um, I was just going to say that that's another thing, too. Like, I'll see your wins, and they'll just really encourage me to just want to get to that level. I even tried to trade 100 contracts a few times, but I've noticed every time it just was not for me. I know I'm not there yet. I need to. First of all, I don't have the account size to do that. And then second of all, I know I'm not disciplined enough to um, be on that level just yet. I need to go back. Like you said, even if it's just one contract, just just get back to my roots and really just understand that it's going to be okay. Um, when you mentioned you lost 100 grand, I'm like, things happen. You know, nothing, nothing for sure. But I have to learn from these lessons because um, I definitely want to do this full time and just really um, make my living off this. But I understand that I have to just get back to my roots and just do exactly what you said for sure. Yeah, exactly. Money's in the basics, man, because that's what technically wins all. Um, and I lost mm -hmm. 100 grand over me making, I don't know how much money from trading, to be honest with you. So I've made it all back and then some, obviously. Absolutely. But it's it's like, it's the same, it could easily be the same story for you. It's like, what, you lost 75K? But then what's the best story ever? Next week, not next week, excuse me, next year, you can say, I lost 75 grand, but I made 400 grand. Right. Then you wouldn't care about the 75 then <laughs> right, <laughs> at all. <absolutely. laughs> You're like, ah, I'm only 35. I'll make that next yeah. in the next two months. <laughs> and I'm so thankful just to have the roadmap, just to know that the process has been done by you. Because I feel like even that alone is worth millions of dollars, just to know that it's possible, especially in a time when there's so much uncertainty. I just really have to just be my best version of me and really do this. Um, even like I remember um, in the comments on YouTube, you mentioned that on Sundays you prepare for the week ahead of time and i'm starting to think i don't really do that i need to start doing that and i would like some more insight on how i should go about that if that's okay yeah sure you don't have to do it but okay and, and there's, there's different ways to do it so before i answer that question in any context are you also doing swing trading or is it only day trading i've been studying it i just have not felt comfortable enough to do it just yet i want to do it so bad but i need to kind of same with day trading just just start from the beginning uh, really going on demand when it comes to swing trading because i haven't been doing it but i have been watching the content and i really want to do it i just know i'm not you're not I there yet. So much anxiety trying to like <laughs> it's open overnight <laughs> well you know what's funny is that so i call it swing trading and you can hold certain positions overnight two days three days four days etc but okay. i don't know 90 plus percent of my trades i buy on say Monday and I'll sell it also on Monday because I see the money. It's like sitting there I'm like, okay, 20 K do I yeah. risk it overnight to go to 30 or to go to zero or do I just sell it now for the 20? Eh, I'll sell it, <laughs> you know? <Yeah>. So, mm -hmm. so to answer your uh, initial question, um, technically my swing trading is just a larger time frame of my day trading. Okay. And whenever you kind of see the day trading entries, it's technically not always, but sometimes a swing trading entry also. Okay. Funny enough, so they go they go hand in hand. So the way I technically prepare for the week is I use the swing trading strategy as a whole to do a couple things. A, I look at the the daily chart or weekly chart, whichever chart, and just see like where's the trend going? Is it going up or down or sideways? Typically, it's going up. Or maybe it's going down. It doesn't matter whichever one, it, whatever, whichever one it is, excuse me. But if it's going, let's just say, all up, then I try to understand, okay, well, realistically, that means probably for this next upcoming week, let me only look for calls. Yeah, There might be some puts, but eh, if it's going up for one week, two weeks, three weeks, I'm guessing it can go up another week. <laughs> like Just from a bare-bone, right. basic, fundamental perspective. And now draw out those higher level zones and et cetera, which I don't want to get into swing trading wise, because that, of course, you're not there yet. But um, once mm -hmm. you draw those zones out, and then you do, the, then that's essentially it. You draw those zones out, and you kind of understand 
where it potentially might bounce on the, those specific charts for swing trading. And then once you go to your regular day trading for that week, you'll see that things are also acting as magnets on the swing trading zones while you draw your day trading zones. And then they kind of coincide together just like that. Okay. Thank so you for that. that helped a lot. <laughs> so, so technically, whenever you do learn swing trading with my strategy, you become a better day trader, funny enough. Okay. It becomes a lot easier because if I uh, think about it again, it'll say it a different way. If you're ending a day trade that also, sorry, if you're ending a, yeah, if you're ending a day trade that just so happens to have also potentially been a swing trade entry as well, and you're like, okay, I'm exiting here after four minutes because I hit my take profit one, but you're thinking, well, this is also a swing trade and it's going up yeah. for two weeks. Well, shit, I might as well hold it. <laughs> That's basically right. okay. it. <laughs> So, so yeah, yeah. Like I, I needed to do this. Um, it's like, like I said, it, it's me that's the problem. So I'm definitely gonna do all the right things, hold myself accountable. I really need to, because the consequences are always never worth it. And I don't want to repeat the same mistakes again and again. Because to me, that's the definition of insanity. And that's what I've been doing. Um, I, I love this community. I love this program. Even with the losses, I know that um, I can get it all back. It's just gonna take time. It's gonna take patience. Um, one day I would love to be a coach in your program. I really would. But there's a lot I got to prove to myself. There's a lot of money I got to make back. There's a lot of things I got to do to even like prove that I deserve that, you know, that opportunity that's ever presented. But that is honestly a goal of mine. Just I just wanted you to know that for sure. Okay. Well, I'll definitely keep you in mind. I do remember talking to you in, uh, I think, was that Slack, um, Facebook Messenger or something like that a long time ago, mm -hmm. I believe, actually. Yeah. So I do remember you for sure, man. So, and I was hoping that. At some point, at some point in the future, because I do know you have a, a great speaking capacity from what I can see, and you're active in the community as well. Um, you know that the more active you've been, and I've been noticing it, right? So, um, okay. turn the stuff around, and we can talk later in the future. Okay, thank you for that, and thank you for taking this time to speak with me and just kind of reinforce what I need to do. Um, yeah, I look forward to just turning this around, getting back on track. Uh, just being that positive example. I love that we have such a good community of people that are all fighting for the same thing and no one's alone. Even just seeing other people's losses, like no one's alone. Everybody's done it. It's just yeah. us uh, holding each other accountable and just, just fixing these issues, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, realistically. And it's, and it's the good thing is that it's not technical stuff, right? Yeah. I mean, sometimes it is, but mm -hmm. very rarely it ever it realistically is. It's kind of like this might be a bad example, but I, I think it's a personally good example, so I'll say it anyway. It's kind of like losing weight. Mm. I'm not a big guy necessarily, but okay. I was at my quote unquote heaviest, quote unquote, um, two twenty five or so, and now okay. I'm down to like one eighty five at this moment. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, and <laughs> I was scared to do it because people were saying losing weight's the hardest thing ever. You can't. I mean, it's going to take you a long time, et cetera, et cetera. Um, mm -hmm. and I just took the same basic approach. I was like, okay, so technically losing weight is you exercise a bit, has to be playing basketball and working out in the gym, mm -hmm. um, and not being a fat ass from eating a whole bunch of fast food. Mm -hmm. And technically the numbers should say you should lose weight. And I was surprised I lost weight. <laughs> like, <laughs> I went from the 225 to the 185 in, uh, about two and a half months or so, technically. And it was in a healthy way, and it made sense, and I had fun doing it the whole time. So now I don't, I don't even believe when people say it's um, losing weight's that hard, realistically. Mm -hmm. Well, you have an eating disorder, I guess, to a certain degree, or um, you're just lazy, but hell, I'm lazy, and I did it. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> just being honest, but the trading's the same way, man. It's, it's never the technical stuff. It's always the very basic, you're in your own way type of deal. Mm-hmm. And you have all the answers, so now it's just a matter of executing it. And, of course, the only thing we haven't talked about is just the fact that you need to definitely practice on a daily basis uh, mm -hmm. if you're not already um, via on-demand. So with the fake money and et cetera, not, real, not necessarily with the real money. Um, and there's no way it wouldn't turn around, man, honestly. Okay, got it. And uh, yeah, no, thank you for that. I definitely want to continue to practice. I try to do at least 30 minutes a day. And honestly, this week I haven't been doing it. I'll never lie. I definitely need to get back to it. Even you mentioned that you do it 30 minutes a day to this day. So yeah. there's no excuse for me not to do it. I need to get back to doing it. Um, sometimes I feel like I kind of blend life into things and I 
I don't know. I feel like, oh, I got it. There's no, if you're not improving, you're degrading. And I definitely need to just hold myself accountable with everything, every step of the way. There's no shortcuts in none of this. Um, it's just who's willing to put in the work and who's willing to be disciplined and do it consistently. So I definitely, definitely need to do that. Absolutely. Yeah, man. And by the way, I mean, and then, so one of the reasons I still practice is, I mean, of course you have to keep the, the knife sharp so you can still be able to cut. Right. But mm -hmm. on top of that, the market changes and shifts so often, you know, and like, right. It's still the same strategy, but you start seeing different little patterns here and there. Like, okay. to go, and I've mentioned this on one of the recent YouTube videos, and I think to the last guy before, I guess. So this might sound redundant, but I'll still say it. Um, I just saw a little pattern of, sure, it's going all in an uptrend, but I just noticed that everything in whatever the past couple of days or so, it was due a, a huge dip on the five-minute chart, multiple red candles back to back to back to back to back. And then it just mm -hmm. retraces and runs up. And it did that oh, wow. three, two to three, does it two or three? Yeah, two to three days before I noticed the pattern. So I okay. was thinking, huh, that's suspicious, but simple to spot. I wonder if it'll do it the fourth day. I'll buy it when it dips, hence buying the dip, I guess. And I did it and it worked. And I was like, huh, that's an easy 20K. I guess I'll do it again. Oh shit! I made another twenty. It's wow. just, okay. just kind of yeah. keep doing. It. And then you got to, and then people are like, "Oh well, it won't work forever." That's fine. Made the hundred k, and then uh, what? Finally lost a trade because it dipped and it didn't keep continue going back up. Oh no, I lost a trade, but I'm still up over a hundred. That's fine. <laughs> it's okay. But there's patterns like that that happen all the time. You know. Okay. And yeah. if you don't find them, that's fine. But that that's kind of why that's the stuff I I personally look for. Because, of course, I've seen so many different patterns throughout the years because I've been trading. I didn't think about it, but since, was it 2017, 2018, something like that? Yeah. So it's been a long, mm -hmm. long time. Um, but that's why I always say trading's boring to me now because I've seen basically everything possible because there's only a 33% chance of where the, the market can go anyway. So it's kind of hard to be wrong on a long term perspective. It's either up, down, or sideways. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and really, it's fifty percent because you can go either up or down. It's just only going sideways until it goes either or. So right. Okay. Okay. Understood. Um, also, I live out in uh, Magnolia, Texas now too. So I'm out. I'm out oh, here. Yeah. Oh man. So you're out here um, burning up too, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's so hot. <laughs> the humidity is terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's horrible, man. I would but, tell you get you get used to it, but I'll be lying. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, um, another thing too is uh, I, I love Texas though. It's it's different from Cali. What's a little bit, I don't want to say slower pace. It's just different in a good way. It's more diverse, and I just like that there's so much opportunity everywhere. Um, I feel like there I can really thrive, and just really um do this long term if I just do everything I need to do. Um, where I was living out in California before, I was renting uh renting a house with roommates, and the problem was they just kind of we weren't on the same page. They just wanted to party and do this all the time, but. I was really dedicated to this and I still like really, really am, but I'm starting to see, I have to go back to my basics, but um, I'm just thankful to be surrounded by like-minded people. I I love the fact that you're in Texas as well, I believe. Um, yeah, I am. Yeah. I mean, he's okay. In Texas. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, okay. Yeah. Um, one day I would like to meet up, but that's okay with you. Um, just because I'm, I'm in this like long term and yeah, I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> so <laughs> but I definitely need to. Just get back. Just get right. I want to be that example for the community, for everyone. Um, do it for myself at this point. Just because this is, I would do it all again. Everything I've been through, I would do it all again because I know this is a way out. And that's such a blessing, especially in times where nothing's um, guaranteed. Like on my job, they laid out, laid off 40,000 people. And I was like, it didn't happen to me this time, but who knows in the future. And I don't want my family to go through anything like that um, and it all be on me and all our lives in you know, another person's hands. And I know you mentioned that before and I, that resonated with me cold hardly cause it's just so real. Um, and I but, was always on, I was always in the layoff. I don't know what was over my name or something. <laughs> I was always in each round, man. Well, <laughs> so I know what you well, mean. Yeah. And I, it's just, and I know that this is the way out, but with this, I have to be my best version of me every time and I have to start small and just build and just see those wins over time. And I'm just so thankful again for you and for the coaches and just for the community in general. I feel like this is the best day training community I've ever seen in my life. And everybody's so committed to this. Uh, everybody gets on at the same time we're here.
and I love the fact that like you're directly involved in the program. That helps so much. Um, it's just I think it's good for morale. It's just so motivating to me. And just seeing your gains, like that's just yeah, that alone is just worth a million dollars to me. Just it's possible. It's all possible. It's just got to get out of my own head, out of my own way, and just really just get to it. Um, and just know it's going to happen in time. Well, I appreciate that, man. And I'm glad to have you here, you and everyone else, honestly, man. Because, I mean, at, at this point, if it might not be obvious, I guess I don't need any more money, technically, right? right. I just do this because at a certain point, after you make a good amount, you just you kind of want to have fun and do your own stuff anyway. So this is me mm-hmm. doing my own stuff. Um, so I'm having fun. I've, as long as you all can turn the, turn the ship around when it comes to these, these profits and whatnot, then mm-hmm. I'm happy and I'll always be here, man. Thank you. Um, yeah. Small side note. Something's telling me to tell you this, even though I don't even need, think you even need to know this, but I'll still say it just in case. Okay. Um, and FYI, this is for YouTube, FYI, just as a heads up, which is the other okay. piece of why I'm going to say this. But um, so when it comes to you having the losses that you did have, mm-hmm. it is what it is. But a lot of people usually let's I don't know how much money you're you have, et cetera. We don't have to get into that. But let's just say you only at this at this moment had like a uh I don't know, thousand dollar account or so. <clears throat> and you're like, <clears throat> I don't want to put any more money into this account. I just want to grow this thousand dollar account to hundred K or two fifty K or two two thirty K, whatever it is, right? You just want to grow that mm-hmm. singular account. Um, that's possible, but it's very, very unlikely and very, very difficult to a certain degree. You know, it's mm-hmm. essentially because the, the real way to make a bunch of money, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, it is fun. to have a bunch of money. Right. And you need money to make mm-hmm. money at the end of the day. So step one still for you, as we talked about, <clears throat> it is to. Go back to that one contract, be consistently profitable with that. OK. And then over time, if you do need more money in the account, then, of course, add more money your own self which sounds annoying to do, right? But I don't want you to cut your wins just because you hypothetically don't have the account size. Again, don't know what your account size is currently, but just want to call that out. I have around like 16 grand in the account. Okay, okay. So you should be fine then. Okay, okay. Mm. Okay, that's good. Takes a long time for one contract to eat away all 16K. So you should never lose all (laughs) And I know the gains they happen quickly. I just, but I have to, yeah, I, I have to stop talking like that because I have to get back to the process and the money will come. The money will come if I do the right thing, if I do everything right. Just, I feel like trading has, does make you a better person because you are forced to do the right things or you will be punished. <laughs> like, yeah, so, 100%. Yeah, I just, I just got to get back to doing everything you said and I appreciate it. I really do. Do you need the money? Uh, right now, ASAP I, for something. Of course, everyone wants money, but do you need it for something? You're like, oh my god, I, I have X giant medical debt that needs to be paid for, or something. I honestly have been trying to do this like full time on the side of my. Uh, I have a party rental business that I run, but I do want to use these funds to kind of cover all my bills, and then eventually uh, invest in the vehicles like real estate to um, grow passive income. But I'm starting to see that I'm really hurting myself by um, trying to rush everything. Um, and trying to just get such big gains, I have to understand that um, I just have to go back to just just doing the little things, let the money come slowly, because uh, I'm not in need of it. But I have I'm trying to normalize a certain amount, which is crazy. Um, like for me, I would like to make a thousand dollars every time I do get in the market. But some days the market's gonna give me six, and that's okay. It's always more than I was making on my job, so yeah. it really is a blessing no matter what. Um, and some I days you that. might make only nine hundred ninety nine. And then you'll feel right, like shit. Right. as stupid as that sounds, but it's real. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I do have a question. I know that we're supposed to use a mental stop because the hedge funds can see the level three data and they can um, do things to, you know, trigger our stop losses. Do you think I should just put a physical stop loss in my risk tolerance just for now, just to be safe until I can get over that, um, just that, that, um, what is it called? And I just hold on. Cause sometimes I do a hold on and I just will. And I, I need to, it's stronger in that aspect, but until then, do you think I should just put a physical stop loss in the system? I wish I could say yes, but the way the stop losses, even besides that point, the way they really work is that, let's say if your stop loss was at a dollar flat, and let's say you mm-hmm. entered it, let's say you entered at one point oh five, I guess something kind of close, etc. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and you just entered it. If you put that stop loss at a dollar, then you're the seller, technically, for the stop loss for that order. Mm-hmm. Well, a buyer would love to buy something cheaper than what it's worth. So it's not uncommon. It'll just automatically execute, or even when it gets even close to that area at a dollar, like maybe it gets to, it goes down and against you at a dollar or one. They'll just be like, oh, yeah, I'll definitely take it cheaper. I'll buy it cheaper because that's what mm-hmm. we all do when we buy. Uh, items that's what people are doing when they're buying stuff you gotta keep in mind we're buying and selling from each other back to back to back even with me i'm yeah. technically in competition with you when i'm buying something you're, you're selling etc so mm. it can work but it's it just doesn't i've tested it a lot because okay. i wanted to just have a stupid lo- stop loss there too um and like i literally remember my last straw was exactly what i said i entered the trade and it immediately went it went in my favor but somehow my stop loss got executed um mm. Because if you saw like the bid and the bid and ask spread, which mm-hmm. I don't get into too much, um, sometimes it's a little wide. Even if it is same day expiration contracts, sometimes it's like it's a dollar, but it goes. People are trying to buy lower on that side, on the right hand side of Active Trader. Um, so it just it just doesn't work, unfortunately. Okay, thank you. Uh, at least I know what I got to do now. Um, I just have to hold myself accountable. It sounds like when it comes to that, just be strict. Um, rather take a small loss or break even than a huge loss. Uh, as you said, the strategy is guaranteed to win 70% of the time. As long as I maximize and opti- optimize those opportunities, those losses really don't even matter. Um, even Coach Wendy one day, she broke down the numbers, and I was like, yeah, if I just do what I'm supposed to do, it's okay. Losing's part of the game, but I have to understand that and you know respect that when it does happen. Yeah. Because I don't and I, right now. I and I have, have, a, have, a, have a small hack for you. This might either be really good for you or you might hate yourself. <laughs> so... <Okay. laughs> We'll see which one it is, I guess. And this is only for you to view, so it's fine. If you, um, let's say, what's tomorrow's? Well, yeah, tomorrow's the market close. But Monday, if you have a, do you have a, if you have a video recording software, which you can either get a cheap one or I think there's some free ones out nowadays. But whatever, if you get a video, you probably have one because you have a business video recording software that only records your screen. Start okay. it whenever you go to the market, potentially, right? Let's just say at nine thirty or you know one hour after market opens. Um, click record, and that way, whenever you potentially come back to do a trade, it will record all of your, you know, everything you're doing on the screen. So that okay. way, later on, when you close the market closes, you in the recording, you can go back and look at, okay, what did I exactly like? You know, you kind of know, but you don't really know. Like you go back and look, okay, why did I do that there? That didn't make any sense. I should have did that. Like you can actually self assess yourself there. That's the first okay. version. The best version to do it, some people don't like doing it because it's harder, but I used to do this all the time, um, and I don't really like doing it, but it's to record yourself doing the live trading. So it's have the actual piece recording, but then have a you know headset that's connected. So whenever a trade does happen, you put your headset on, and then you just literally talk through the entire thing. So as the trade's mm-hmm. happening, you're just trying to you're trying to figure out things to say, which is kind of good because you can talk yourself in or out of the trade. So you're let, it's maybe it's coming down. You're saying, okay, it's coming down to my major zone. Let's see if it's gonna hit it. Looks like it's going down from five sixty three point whatever to this. Okay, it's going good. Okay, if it does this, then I'll maybe enter the trade. But if it does this, then I'm not gonna enter the trade. Okay, it's starting to do what I said. Okay, I might enter the trade. Okay, it's going against me. And then the nice thing is that once you potentially get into where the entry is. And you can then you'll start seeing, especially if you vocalize it, that you just lie to yourself and say, "Well, I'm I'm just gonna." You start stuttering. I'm just gonna enter it anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then you start hearing the tonality of your voice change a little bit. Okay. Understood. After you go That's back, you know, it, it's a it's an interesting yeah. thing to do. It fucks with you though. <laughs> <laughs> I also um yesterday I made some um I laminated like the matching cards and the, and the checklist and stuff like that. I feel oh, like nice. now I can actually physically see it um, before I even like do anything, just so I can keep myself busy or just even like play a game with myself and just remember what to look for. Um, yeah. I think that was a great idea. I'm definitely gonna do what you say because I think that's gonna help a lot. I can know exactly what my mindset was, what I was thinking, and even talk myself out of bad things because I think sometimes I'll just be like, "Oh, I know what's about to happen," or um, yeah. you know, "I don't know, I'll just jump into something a little too early and and I'll pay dearly." So yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that as well. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be really, and if you keep a, a list of those, man, you can easily always go back to it. That'd be the easy way to assess all your trades and stuff like that. It's it's really good. Then you'll see like how do I feel whenever I'm when I do an inner trade and it's going fine. Like it sounds like I'm not 
<clears throat> sounding worried. I'm not clearing my throat more. I'm not getting my voice lower because I'm kind of scared. You know, like different, <laughs> different yeah. little stuff, basically. So it's okay. fun. I like that. Thank you. Um, and then also what I'll do too is I'll uh, I'll log my trades. I'll also reflect them because I saw that in a video on YouTube that I think Dustin or someone uh, put out. But basically, it's just writing the trade. What happened? I haven't been doing this. Like I'm just saying, I'm just all over the place. I haven't been doing this recently. But before, when I was on it, I was doing that. I'll log my trades, but also reflect, and then I'll journal to myself about how I felt, what was going on. In addition to the journal that's already you provide for us, which is excellent. Um, it's just those things I need to get back to doing. I've also noticed when I break my routine, when I work out in the morning and I get to the chart, I'm more alert and I'm ready to go. Um, if I just get up and go to the chart, it's it's just different. Like I feel different. I feel like I deviated from my routine, and then sometimes I deviate from the strategy as well. I don't know why those correlate so well together when I do that, but I have to just do the right things. I think I need to stick my, to my routine so I can just be my best version of myself when I do come to the computer. But even then, when I do get to the computer, I need to set my alarms. I mean, make my zone set my alarms, walk away. Don't stare at it like it's my favorite show and go do something else. And just yeah. stick to it. I like that you saw that you did identify that pattern, though. So that for sure would help you when it comes to trading. Definitely. Okay. Workout equals trading. No workout doesn't mean no trading, potentially. Okay. Might get too buff doing this, but it is what it is. <laughs> 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 well, um, I'm trying to see if I have any other questions. I I think you answered all my questions, and I, I appreciate this again. Um, it's okay if it <clears throat> excuse me. Is it okay if I ever reach out if I ever have any more questions or anything like that? Uh, but it's it's always funny because at the end of the day, it always just comes back to me just needing to fix what I need to do for me. There's really no one to blame but myself, and I hold myself accountable, and I have to just get back to it honestly and do the right things. Yeah. Well, you have all the pieces to the puzzle, man. Um, if you yeah. do reach to answer your question, if you do reach out, uh, I'll try to get back to you. But as you can imagine, I get to everybody a yeah. shit ton <laughs> of messages. Yeah, whether it be in Slack and email, in the business phone, and really everything. So it's very difficult <laughs> to be honest with you. Understood. <laughs> but Understood. I always try. But um, Thank you. yeah, man, you got all the pieces to the puzzle. Now you just gotta just put them together, man, honestly. So you did everything wrong already. You know what to right. do what, that's right. You yeah, have done it um, all wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, but it is what it is. That's that's the way to get successful. It's the best story. Yeah. No one like no one likes the, the rich kid who's always been rich. No one wants to hear that. It's boring. You want to hear I lost 75K and uh, like I said, the next next year he made all of it back, and then some. That's the better story. That's the story that Absolutely. other people around you, your children, your family, and everybody will look up to you for. Yeah. yeah. You're just the perfect guy. No one cares. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, it is what it is. But, um, yeah, I mean, so to close it out, I mean, I always ask this, ask this question. I know we had a lot of questions back and forth uh, between each other, but so as CEO of the company, as um, a guy who's been investing for quite a while, six plus years or so. Do you have any questions personally, professionally, et cetera, that you've always wanted to ask me specifically, or are we good? I always have like questions for you. Cause like to me, I see it as like my big brother. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, just, I do. I put you in like that. Like anything, anytime you release a video, um, I just, I try to put myself in the sh like your shoes, what I would do, but I understand that I have to, um, I need to get right before I do any of that. Cause you've earned this, you've earned every dollar. So I have to, um, do the same, and I'm thankful to have that roadmap. Uh, that roadmap here to to even like be on that process of getting to that point one day. Um, things I want to ask. Oh man, there's always so much, but I'm trying to think right pick, now. Only, we, we'll, we'll limit you to one until the next okay. time we meet. Whenever you, <laughs> whenever you end up telling me that you end up being successful, then we will get the other questions asked. But all right, we'll limit to the one. <laughs> what was your um biggest setback when it came to day trading? I think the biggest setback when it came to this, when it comes to trading, was I really thought I had it back in the day when I was doing the whole penny stock trading. And okay. I was consistently profitable until the one day I just wiped everything, unfortunately. And then the next day, I needed a big payment to be paid for the house, which is called the mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, shit, I don't know how this is going to work. But um, it, it was basically that, and so back then, I don't think I've mentioned this before, but it was a very simplistic strategy, which is called multi-day runners, basically. 
Um, and it all it really was was that if you see a penny stock that's literally going for two, three plus days, then the logic behind it is that it can go one more day. That's fine. So mm. I was only just doing that, made a couple of thousands of dollars doing it. And but I started getting greedy, unfortunately, like a lot of us do. So mm. one of something, I forgot what the ticker symbol was, but it ran for I think three days first. I bought in, sold, I made like five K. And then the next day, bought in, sold, because it was still going up, made another 5K. Next day, same thing. And it kept, it went up for, I think, six days straight of me making the 5K. And I'm like, man, I've made $30,000. This is crazy. So, mm-hmm. I'm, so, of course, big brain energy here. I'm thinking, you know what? If I put all 30000 on the next day, then I'll make sixty. I got this. Yeah. And of course, I lost all of it <laughs> because yeah. it, it spiked down so dang hard after that because of me getting okay. greedy. So I, I think that was the hardest thing because it's, it was a shot to the ego for one to think that just because it's going one way, it's always going to go one way. And just because you made money today or tomorrow or the next day, it doesn't mean you'll be able to pay your mortgage because capital preservation at the time should have been more important than capital general, um, general I guess, making more capital. Okay. So that sucks, but it is what it is. And I love that you're always like just open with sharing that with us. Like losses happen. Um, it's just what are we gonna do about it? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, man, of course. Well, I can't wait to hear your story pretty soon once you turn the ship around, man. So okay. I'll try to let's try to keep loofed up, loofed in, I mean, excuse me. Um, and let me know how things are gonna go in the next couple months or so. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, man. Well, it was nice chatting with you, man. So we'll keep in contact and just good luck, man. Definitely. If you need any more help, let me know or just shoot a comment in, in Slack in the general open community. And either I'll get to you when you get to you or, or so on. Okay. Thank you, Maurice. All right, man. You have a good rest of your day. Thank you, too.